Hi Gary, Richard Hi. from Sky Sports News, how are you doing? Um, can we start with injuries please? Uh, how are Neto and, and Dominic Solanke? Neto will be out, um, he has an issue with his hamstring. Um, we're not sure how long, it won't, it won't be it won't be short term. It'll be um, fairly fairly long term. We think um, in in that. I mean, it won't be a, it won't be a week or two. Um, so Neto's going to be out for the next couple at least. Uh, Dom's a lot better than expected. So good news on Dom. He's recovered well, uh, and we're still hopeful. Okay. Sh should we get VAR out of the way? First off, I mean, I've got it out of the way already, but we can get it out of the way again if you want. Yep. Um, I think you said it was getting ridiculous on Monday night. Um, yeah. Obviously, we saw what happened last night as well um, and different views on how, how that's all interpreted. W what are your views on the way it's being used at the moment? Um, I don't have a problem with VAR. I think it, um, I think it should help us reach the right decision more often than we would without it. Um, so yeah, I don't have a I don't have a problem with VAR really. I think it it definitely has a place. Um, I think whenever I've discussed it, and especially with referees and officials, I've always just said I hope that we just continue to improve and find a way to arrive at the right conclusion more often. Um, and I think that's obviously what everyone what that everyone hopes for. So um, yeah, that's that's where I am with it really. Is that the frustration then, more getting the rub of the green consistency, um, or e even maybe some of the ways that laws are interpreted? Yeah, I think that, yeah, I mean, since the game on Monday night, I haven't thought about it at all because I'm so keen to move on and focus on what we need, what we can control and what we need to do. Um, and I, I don't have time to try and fix laws and things on of the game. So focus purely on ourselves. But yeah, wh whatever it is, I just feel that if if we arrive at the wrong conclusion as often as we are, then, some, then something needs hopefully to to improve um that's that's basically where I'd, i i yeah i just hope eventually we, we we find the right conclusion more than we have done recently yeah let's move on then yeah. <laughs> i mean it's uh, two successive defeats but that came off such a good run um has anything changed in those games that you're looking to put right in particular um yeah there was, there was stuff that i wanted to put right in the in the first six as well to be honest so yeah there's 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 things that we're working on um First half at West Ham, we weren't as good as I would have liked us to have been. Second half, I thought we played well. Um, thought we we wrestled back some control and were the were the dominant force. Without we had some we had some good situations without really um, testing the goalkeeper. But then when I look at the other end, our, our goalkeeper wasn't tested either, really. So um, yeah, apart from the breakaway where they get the the penalty at the end, I thought we had a, a real good second half performance where you felt something might might happen for us. Yeah, Tottenham's form is a little bit indifferent. I know it's not like a, a fantastic time to play any club like that, but in front of your own fans, with them in that form, is it a good time? Um, I, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. Um, obviously they can, they're, they're an extremely talented side, great squad, great manager. Um, have had a, had a good start to the season. Um, obviously the last couple of results have been tricky for them. Um, Got Lucas Moura back, which allows has allowed them to go back to three four three, which they 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 played for the, the start of the season when they were on a good run. They'd, obviously, they were missing Moura, Richarlison, and Kulusevski all at the same time, so they've they'd gone to uh, five three two for a while, but have managed to switch back. So, um, yeah, I mean to have a front three of Moura, Son, and Kane um, when you're missing Richarlison and Kulusevski already shows that the quality and the depth that they have. Um, but yeah, we're. I mean, we're looking for. I'm really looking forward to the game. I think, um, as you say, at home in front of our own fans, boys will be looking forward to getting back here um, and a, a, another chance for us to go and put on a good performance. And just finally, from me, you're asked the same question before and after every match about the job. Do you expect to at least have it through to the World Cup? Um, no, I, I don't expect anything. I, um, I'm for just getting ready for. I, I expect to have it for for Tottenham. Um, I expect to do well against Tottenham, and then we'll we'll see where we are after Tottenham. Hi, Gary. Um, just on the goalkeeping situation, then obviously Mark Travers was left out by you after the nine went in against him. What psychological challenge is he facing coming back in now with an opportunity as the number one again? It would appear. No, I, I don't think he'll have a psychological challenge. I think he's that his training performances and how he's been since that moment have been top draw, um, and I have zero concerns around putting him back in. Um, 
I think I made it very clear when when the change was made that I was delighted to have both of them uh, and that I saw them both as number ones and it was just Neto at that moment um, for whatever reasons I felt. Um, but yeah, putting, putting Mark Travers back in doesn't concern me at all. I have full faith in him. Neto obviously has the, mar the March on Travers in experience. What therefore has Neto added to the team that you'll lose without him? Yeah, he brought a calmness to us. Um, he um, helped us sort of steady the ship when we'd had some tough results. Um, but when when I was asked around about it um, initially, I said I'm really pleased to have them both because Travis is a, is, a, is a top goalkeeper. He makes top saves. Um, when he come when he trains with us as a team, when we do our team stuff, he's he's been making fantastic saves. Um, whenever I check in with a goalkeeper coach as to what they're doing when they're not with us, he always says he was top again. Um, so yeah, just, uh, as I said at the time, we're fortunate that we've got two that that we can put in. You may be aware he had the game of his life at home to Spurs. He saved everything a couple of seasons back when uh, when Bournemouth beat Spurs. So that's a nice little market for the weekend. Yeah, I'll get him watching that. <laughs> get him watching that on repeat. Yeah. Um, just at the other end, obviously we, we spoke before about putting the ball in the net and where it's just coming up short for you at the moment. Have you found any more answers as to the, the processes behind the fact that you're finding it difficult to score? Um, no, there's loads. There's loads of reasons why um, why why that could be an issue. You've um, so it's always. If we go first half against West Ham, we turn the ball over too often in before we get to that part of the pitch when we had real good situations that we would have definitely arrived and caused them problems if we'd have if we'd have been better in uh, uh, in those situations. Um, second half against West Ham, we arrive and we miss our. We, I think we missed a couple of crosses where we were sort of in on goal. Um, we had a couple of decent sort of headed opportunities. So no, I think it's um, it's the most difficult part of the pitch to to execute, um, especially at this level. Um, and yeah, we need to be really clinical when we arrive there because, uh, especially against big teams, you don't you, you generally don't see as much of the ball. Um, so you need when when you arrive in that area, you need to be clinical. And, and we have been to be, to be to be fair in. We go away to Nottingham Forest and score three. We go away to Newcastle, and you've seen what Newcastle have done since. Um, and take the lead for a great goal. The goals at Fulham were were very very good. Um, two at home to Leicester. So yeah, I don't think it's uh, it's it's difficult, but I don't think we're I don't think it's an alarming situation. The amount of goals we've scored so far. I think if you if you look at the the table and, and where we are in recent weeks for goals scored, I think we're we're, we're doing okay. Final one for me. Um, the league table has Spurs as the highest opponents that you'll have played since you've been in charge. Does that naturally make them the toughest challenge so far that you faced as a manager? Uh, yeah, I think they're. Yeah, I think from from the outside, everyone will expect them to finish very high up the league. Um, but I did I did say the same about Newcastle. Newcastle are very very good. Um, but yeah, Spurs have got world class players, uh, world class manager who has been there a while now. Um, they they have a real clear identity with and without the ball um, so it'll be it'll be a tough test but not yeah one that I'm really really looking forward to I did forget one I know your son's a Spurs fan isn't he yes any, he is, any issues yeah. there in the house this week <laughs> no he uh, he wants us to win he said yeah he's keen for Bournemouth to win so um, yeah he uh, that was nice of him <laughs> <laughs> how does that why is he a Spurs fan let's just explain how uh, my wife's dad uh, was a big Spurs fan and obviously I'm fairly busy at weekends generally so he started yeah he started going to Spurs with my wife's dad I was keen for him to to go and watch and he yeah he, he loves it so and they've got a nice stadium so I thought I'd send him to a nice stadium to watch his to watch his football so do you get the chance to take him or oh, obviously um, I've limited. been uh, I've been a couple of times with him um, not not as often as as you would like to but uh, yeah occasionally if the game I think last year we went a couple of times on a Sunday maybe um, yeah, so yeah, he's, he loves his football. So, but yeah, he, he'll be he'll be pushing for a Bournemouth win like the rest of us. Just staying on the Spurs theme, there we've got Adam Smith, who's currently captaining the team, leading the team. Just just tell us how important a player he is off the pitch as well as on. We can all see him on the pitch, off the pitch as well. Yeah, he's been really good, really really good. Obviously, he knows his you know he knows his way around the club. He's been here a long time, um, played an awful lot of football matches. Um, so yeah, it's. 
um, he's been he's been brilliant for me um, off the pitch on the pitch as you say um, the role of a captain is important of course so um, to have him stepping in for Lloydy um, Lloydy is obviously a, a huge loss for us as well um, so to have Smudge to step in has, has, has been good it's an important game it's the rainbow laces campaign this weekend as well just tell us how important and you know the players can be role models at this at this time yeah I think yeah, I think it's, it's it's very important. I think the the games come a long way. Obviously, still still work to be done. Um, but yeah, they, I mean, everyone's aware that, and, and I'm glad that we're in a place where um, more people feel like they can they can be themselves and be open um, around around what they are and how they feel. Um, obviously, we've got our own group here, the, the proud cherries who who do some real good work. Um, so yeah, it's a it's 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 a nice reminder for everyone.